<laughs> Welcome back to Sound 101 for one more episode all about music. The saxophone. That thing. Well, we are back with more musical instruments that you guys have been requesting. Today's episode is all about the saxophone. So of course we brought back Ty, who is a master engineer and producer when it comes to all things music, and Nathan, who apparently can play all things music. Today, it's the saxophone. So Ty, the big question. Yes. How do you mic up a sax? Great question. Generally speaking, I like to use one or two mics on the instrument. It also depends on the room, it depends on the instrument, it depends on the player. So as you're probably gathering from, if you've watched this whole series, is that it really just depends. However, what we want to do today is give you a great starting point to springboard into your recording. So what I generally like to do is I like to put a single microphone on the saxophone and we can get to a two mic technique afterwards as well. If you're looking for a warmer, bassier, heavier response, then I tend to mic the bell of the instrument. If I want to get a little bit more tone, a little bit more clarity, I tend to kind of strike a balance between the keys and the bell. Every instrumentalist will have a favorite tone, and it's always a great idea to ask any instrumentalist where they've had good success in miking. In fact, it doesn't matter if it's a saxophone or a marimba or a kazoo or whatever, don't be afraid to ask the player, hey, what works for you? What do you like? Especially if you're not really sure where you're going, ask them because if the person is used to being in front of a microphone, chances are they found something that works for them. Half the time they'll say, you're the pro, you do what you wanna do. I think what we're gonna try today to start is we're gonna put one kind of partway through, kind of aimed between the keys and the bell. Okay. And another thing you also find out is in a recording situation, usually once the instrumentalist has headphones on, they will actually work their way in and out of the microphone. They'll hear the sweet spot. Mm -hmm. If they feel like it's a little too bassy, they'll back off a little bit. If they feel like they want a little bit more low end because they're monitoring themselves, they'll kind of move closer into the microphone. So half the time they'll do your job for you. Okay, so you said you wanted in the pre-show, you wanted a cardioid. Generally well, speaking, I love the sound of Omnis. I'm a huge fan of Omnis. However, with today's acoustic challenge, being in right. a living room. Supposed to be at your home. Correct. I want to try to eliminate some of the extraneous noises that are penetrating our walls right now. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to try to isolate the horn from the traffic noise that we will get if we use an Omni. So let's go with a tighter pattern. I think a cardioid would be best. There you go. I'm terrible with math, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put it where I think it should go, and then we can figure that out. But yeah, six to eight inches is generally a good rule, depending on how much output, how hard they're actually blowing into the instrument itself. So again, the closer in you're gonna get, the more key noise you're gonna get, and every instrument is different. Some players are very light on their keys. Okay. Some players have a lot more key noise. Again, it's the instrument and the, and the way they play it. So sometimes if you get a little bit too close, it's gonna be a little too clicky. Mm. Right, you get a little too I hate, I hate a clicky sax. A clicky sax. So some guys love it, some guys don't. Yeah. So it really just kind of depends. One of the most important things to do is before you even place the microphone, ask the player to be in their playing position. Because what happens is if you place a microphone somewhere, a lot of times a player will naturally gravitate towards the mic. They'll feel like they, they might want to come up to it yeah. or come down to it. So the first thing I will do is I will ask, just get in your natural playing position. Wherever that is, that's where I'm going to go to. And I'm going to work around them. I don't ever want them coming up to the microphone because they feel like they have to. They will work their way in and out of the range in the sweet spot, but you want to make it comfortable for them. Okay, do we need to worry about jazz players though? They look like squirmers. They are, a lot of yeah. jazz, they're definitely squirmers. Let's actually hit record, and if you want to wail on it for a little bit, uh, there you go. Wow, there's a lot of power there. Yes, there is. The sax is a very bright, cutting, penetrating instrument with a lot of harshals and, and overtones. So it's a complex instrument and it's really gonna test the, the merits of a microphone. Wonderful, now you said there's a two microphone technique. What you can do as well is, I like to have a clip-on mic because lots of times guys are squirming around a stage. Jazz right? players. Jazz players. Or if you're doing videos and 
face it, today YouTube is a huge thing and there are people making I've fantastic heard of YouTube. livings yeah. on YouTube. So if you're doing a YouTube thing and you don't want to have a lot of microphone stands laying around, then a clip-on mic is a great way to go. So really, at that point, you're you're limited to just kind of clipping it to the bell, which okay. is a great sound. So I think if we do that, we can actually have an A-B situation. I think I have one already pre-prepped. Now there's something that we considered when we were prepping this, is we actually put a little bit of black moleskin on the metal teeth of this clip, because this is a brass instrument. And the last thing we want to do is scratch anything. These things are valuable, and they are worth something to everyone, and especially to the player. And the last thing you want to do is at a scratch. And, and with that said, the first thing you should always do before you can assume clipping anything to anybody's instrument is you always want to ask the player if they are okay with you clipping anything to their mm -hmm. instrument. Always ask for permission. And if they give you any reluctance, reluctance, reluctance just, yeah. just step away. Don't even go there. Cool. Well, I've actually got this all mic'd up. And what we're going to do is actually use, and I don't think most people out there even know what this is for. This is a belt clip. We're actually going to go right in so we can actually clip this with that moleskin. And we want it on the outside of the instrument, right? Not in the deep in the bell, right? Uh, it really depends. What We have an Omni on here, correct? So that is an Omni. The Omni will pick up all the way around, so I think you're going to be good there. So let's actually now record so that you guys at home can hear an A-B test between the Omnidirectional uh, V-Lov and our brand new prototype mic for the Unimic. Wow, you're a fantastic player. Uh, anything else we need to consider, Ty, when miking up a saxophone or really any brass instrument? If you've got a really nice room, sometimes using a nice room mic is nice. You're gonna get a blend of the room. If we're here in a living room, this living room actually sounds pretty good aside from the traffic that we hear, but the <laughs> acoustics in here are actually not bad. So on an instrument like this, I'm not afraid to pull this microphone off of the instrument a little bit to get more of a, 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 live, of feel. a live feel. Again, it really depends on the type of track you're trying to put this into and what you're trying to go for. So again, the most important thing to me is A, is the microphone comfortable for the player? You never want to be in the way, as an engineer, that's rule number one, you want to be as invisible as possible. You want to get in and get out, even if it means sacrificing a little bit of the tone quality, and that's really the most important thing out of anything that you're going to be miking up. Well, we are coming up to the end of our video, but not just yet are we ready to close it out because it is time for Nathan to show us his skill. Wonderful. Well, that really does wrap it up for us today. We want to thank Ty for coming in and teaching us all this kind of stuff. We want to thank Nathan coming in for blaring on your sax. Beautiful music. We did some wonderful recordings today, and we can't do any of this without you guys out there watching. So you gotta go hit that subscribe. You gotta go hit that bell for notifications. And of course, find us on all social media platforms. We are everywhere at DD Microphones. You gotta drop those comments in that section below and tell us what you want us to do because that is where we go to get our ideas for this kind of content so you can actually find stuff that you enjoy. I'm Andrew from D Microphones. Thank you for watching. Messed up my own name.